Hello everyone. On this video, I'm going to talk about endocrine and exocrine glands. Okay, so endocrine system consists of several endocrine glands plus many hormone secreting cells and organs that also have other functions. Okay, so a gland is a single or a single cell or groups of epithelial cells uh, that secrete a substance. So a gland could be endocrine or exocrine. Okay, and that's, so that's why I want to discuss here what the difference is between the two. Uh, so we have many, many, many glands all throughout the body, and they all fall into two categories. They are either an endocrine gland or an exocrine gland, and in some cases they could be both. Okay, so Let's talk about what those are. Uh, so endocrine glands are glands that secrete hormones. All right, so hormones are secretions of the endocrine system. So the endocrine system, I've mentioned before, it's our uh, system of hormones that works alongside the nervous system to control everything that the body does. Okay, so hormones are secretions of the endocrine system. They're chemical messengers. Um, they help us maintain homeostasis alongside the nervous system. Uh, they help alter metabolism, they spur growth and development, influence reproductive processes, participate in circadian rhythm, um, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on. There are uh, many, many functions of the body that are all regulated and controlled via hormones. And all of those aspects are all um, kind of facets of maintaining homeostasis. So hormones are released into interstitial fluid and then taken up into the bloodstream where they can be delivered throughout the body. Okay, so a hormone is when we have a gland that secretes a chemical, that is the hormone, that chemical is secreted out into the interstitial fluid, that's the fluid um, outside of the cell within a tissue. So it's between cells within a tissue. Okay, so the hormone is secreted into that fluid outside of the cell, and from that fluid, it's taken up into the bloodstream. Okay, so anything a cell secretes, it's secreting it into its surrounding fluid, and from there, the blood picks up whatever that secretion was, whether it's a waste product or a hormone or whatever else it could be, and that thing gets taken up into the bloodstream where it then travels through the body to wherever it needs to go. Uh, so the nervous system and the endocrine system work together. And I talked about this last week in our um, homeostasis video. Okay, so they work together to help maintain homeostasis. The nervous system gives immediate commands but those commands are fleeting. So the effects of those commands are fleeting. So they happen very quickly and then they're gone just as fast as they came. Um, and they're also very local. So we could send commands to just one place in the body to have one specific effect in the body. Versus the endocrine system sends slower and longer lasting commands that travel throughout the entire body. So if you think about uh, when an endocrine gland secretes a hormone, that's a chemical that's going into the blood and that blood is traveling through the entire body. So for one, it takes longer to send that message because we have to wait for that gland to secrete that hormone and for it to be taken up into the blood and then for it to be circulated in the blood throughout the entire body. So it takes longer than the, iner than the nervous system, which is nearly immediate. And then it also is going throughout the entire body so it's affecting many structures all at once instead of just one localized place. And then because there are chemicals in the blood, to make that effect go away, it takes time to take those hormones and, and filter them out of the blood and get them out. So they're longer lasting commands because it takes a little while to get the hormones back out of the blood when we don't want to send that message anymore. Okay, so a hormone only affects specific cells called target cells, which are covered with 2,000 to 100,000 protein receptors where only a specific hormone binds. So we have many different hormones that are secreted to have different functions. Like if we secrete a hormone into the blood, that blood will travel all through the body and deliver that hormone, and the hormone will only affect its target cells. So those are cells who have little receptors on their surface 
that specifically receive the message from that particular hormone. So a hormone could have many different types of target cells, like one hormone can have an effect on a hundred different kinds of cells. And one cell could receive messages from many different hormones. Okay, so the response to a hormone depends on both the hormone and the target cell. So what effect a hormone has depends on both what the hormone is and how that cell responds to that particular hormone. Because again, a hormone can affect many different cells and each of those types of cells might have a very different response to that hormone. Okay, so what a hormone does depends on both the cells that it's targeting and the hormone itself. So different target cells may respond differently to the same hormone and the same target cell may respond differently to different hormones. Okay, so both really are important in terms of the function of that hormone on a cell. Okay, so endocrine and exocrine. Endocrine is when we secrete hormones, like we've been talking about here, into the interstitial fluid, the fluid surrounding the cells, which then diffuses and is taken up into the blood capillaries, and the blood carries them throughout the body. So endocrine glands, that's like the pituitary gland, the thyroid, adrenals, and the list goes on and on. Okay, so that's what we've been talking about so far. Those are endocrine glands. In contrast, the other category of glands, those are exocrine glands. They secrete anything but hormones. So they secrete substances other than hormones. It could be all kinds of different things. And they're secreting into ducts, so like a hollow tube. So they're secreting into a duct. They're secreting into a tube that carries whatever that secretion was into the inside of a body cavity, into the lumen of an organ, which would be like the hollow space inside an organ, um, or onto the surface of the body. So like salivary glands, mammary glands, lacrimal glands, like for tear production and so on. Okay, so here, this is a picture of, of course, the stomach and small intestine and then tucked underneath it, that is the pancreas. Um, so I included the pancreas here because it's an example of an organ that has both endocrine and exocrine function. Its endocrine function is that it secretes hormones. It secretes insulin and glucagon and a couple others that we're not gonna get into here. Okay, so it secretes hormones. That's the endocrine function. So it's secreting these chemicals that are taken up into the blood and then they travel through the blood to have all kinds of effects on cells throughout the body. It also, at the same time, other cells in the pancreas have exocrine function. That means that they're secreting other stuff besides hormones. So in this case, pancreatic juice. Um, so the exocrine cells here are manufacturing digestive enzymes that it's then secreting into the inside of this green duct here that you see, it's the pancreatic duct. So that duct is carrying those secretions and emptying into the lumen of the small intestine. The lumen meaning the empty hollow space inside of the small intestine. Okay, so that's an example of where we have an organ that is both endocrine and exocrine. More often, it's either an endocrine gland or an exocrine gland. That's the most common scenario, but this is a rare case where we have one organ or one structure that actually has both functions. Okay, so endocrine glands are part of the endocrine system. They secrete hormones that go into the blood. The exocrine glands could be part of any system in the body. We have exocrine glands in many different systems, and I'll touch on a few examples here. And they're secreting anything but hormones, and their secretions are going into ducts, which are carrying them into the inside of an organ or a cavity or onto the surface of the skin, um, not into the blood. So I have a couple examples that I just pulled from some of our other systems of the body, uh, but these are just very few examples relative to how many there actually are. Uh, so in the integumentary system, we have sebaceous glands, sudoriferous glands, and ceruminous glands. Um, so these are all exocrine glands. These are not secreting hormones. They're secreting other things. 
Uh, so sebaceous glands are secreting sebum, which is the oil that our skin is secreting and the oil that goes onto the surface of our skin. So that's sebaceous gland. Sudoriferous glands are secreting sweat. Okay, so the sweat is traveling through a duct onto the surface of the skin. The sebum travels through a duct onto the surface of the skin. Seruminous so glands secrete cerumen, which is the waxy component of earwax. So earwax is actually a combination of sebum, oil, and cerumen, the wax. Uh, so our earwax is a combination of those two secretions, which is why some people might have oilier earwax and others might have waxier. And even day to day, your own earwax might be of different consistencies depending on the proportion of the two secretions. Okay, another example, in the digestive system, we have tons of exocrine glands. So all of our many digestive enzymes and um, acids and, and all of those things, those are all uh, secretions of exocrine glands. So just as one example, like I mentioned a minute ago when I talked about the pancreas, is pancreatic juice. That's a clear, colorless liquid that consists mostly of water, some salts, sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda, and enzymes. Okay, so the pancreas, its exocrine function is to produce pancreatic juice, which it secretes into the small intestine to assist in uh, neutralizing the acids from the stomach and to assist in digestion and breaking down the nutrients that, that are coming through in the food. Okay, another digestive example is bile. Uh, bile aids in the digestion and absorption of lipids. So if somebody doesn't have enough bile, then they have a hard time breaking down lipids in digestion. Um, so our bile is something created by the liver, and then it travels down to the gallbladder. In this picture, that's that kind of green pear-shaped squeezy bag. <laughs> it's really, I always call it a little squeezy bag because it's just an empty bag that collects bile that's produced by the liver, uh, collects that bile, and then when we eat something with a lot of lipids, meaning fats, uh, the gallbladder contracts and just squirts its uh, bile that it's been storing into that duct, the common bile duct, which carries it down to go into the lumen of the small intestine, the space inside the small intestine. Okay, so that's another example of um, an exocrine gland or exocrine secretions, that would be bile. And then the reproductive system. There are many glands that are part of both the male and female reproductive systems. And I just picked the prostate just to give another example here. Uh, it's a single donut shaped gland about the size of a golf ball. Uh, you can see it's kind of orange right in the center of our picture here. It's sitting just below the bladder and the urethra is running right through the center, which is why we describe it as a donut shape, is because it has a hole right in the middle of it for the urethra to travel down from the bladder. Uh, so it secretes a milky, slightly acidic fluid that makes up about 25% of the volume of semen. Okay, so in the male reproductive tract, there are several different exocrine glands that are secreting different fluids with different um, substances in them that all mix together and become semen, which is the fluid that is helping to deliver the sperm. Uh, so it helps um, semen in general is more alkaline um, to help the sperm travel and survive in the acidic environment of the vagina, like we talked about in a past lecture. Okay, that is all I have for you here. I'm gonna stop recording. Thank you for watching.